Welcome to the Media Shower Better Communication Series. This is content optimization. Let me tell you the origin story of Media Shower. We started out publishing a comedy site, a comedy site called Zug.com, very popular back in the day, and we were very well known for our pranks. One of our most successful pranks was called the credit card prank. And the idea was simple. If you ever noticed when you go into the store and you sign for your credit card purchase, nobody checks the signature. So I did this experiment where I started signing more and more outrageous signatures to my credit card receipts to see if anyone would notice. I began getting kind of out of control. Modern art, uh, stick figures. I started signing names like Mariah Carey uh, and Beethoven. And finally, I stole this card. No one noticed. So we published this as an article on the early web, and before we knew it, it went viral, and we had a page one ranking in Google for the keyword credit cards. Now, this was in the early days of Google. We didn't even understand how valuable this was until credit card companies started coming to us and saying, we'll pay you a lot of money to advertise on that page. And thus began our journey into the world of SEO or search engine optimization. I don't want to brag, but we kind of invented it. Today, we take a very different approach. While SEO is important, we now think about it in terms of content optimization. And that's what we'll talk about in this video. In earlier training videos, we talked about the 80-20 rule, that 20% of your content drives 80% of your results. And this is a rule or a law that applies to all websites, no matter how big or how small you are. There's a small group of blog posts, a small group of articles or pages that are going to drive a large percentage of your results. However, we don't know what those 20% are. <laughs> So we're going to find them and then optimize the 20% that's working. Now, this is why it's so important to invest in what we call the assembly line, this idea of getting a lot of content out in a very uh, operationally excellent way uh, that maintains both consistency and persistency or quality and quantity of content because this approach doesn't work if we only have five articles. You can't optimize five. You need 50 or 100 articles before you can start thinking about optimizing content, picking out that 20% and then making it even better. Now, some people say, why go after the 20% that's working? Why not try to optimize the stuff that's not working? Well, this is simple math. If we have two pieces, one of them is getting, let's say, about 50,000 views, and one of them is getting about 500 views, and we improve both of them so they're about 10% better, the higher traffic page is going to generate about 5,000 additional views. The lower traffic page is going to generate about 50 additional views. So by optimizing the top performing content, we're going to be able to get much more value out of that content and make it perform even higher. That's what content optimization is all about. And we do it regularly. We do it on an ongoing basis, uh, quarterly and even monthly if possible. So how do we find that 20%? How do we find our top performers? This is the low hanging fruit. <laughs> Look how low hanging that fruit is. Look at that, one of the fruits actually on the ground. That's low hanging. We don't want to have to reach up high to do this stuff, optimize the stuff that's not working well. We want to find the stuff that's down low. And the first way we do that is through the Media Shower dashboard. So this is our reporting dashboard where we track and assign a score to every piece of content. And generally speaking, the higher the score, the better that content is performing. And so these are going to be the pieces that would be our 20%. They're our star performers. They're the ones that we're gonna to try to go optimize. You also can use Google Analytics. If you can find your way through that bloated, inefficient reporting tool, then you can possibly find pages that are doing well within Google Analytics that give you kind of similar metrics, but in a much more confusing and hard to understand way. You also can go into a Ahrefs, uh, which is an SEO tool which will show you your top pages. So you type in your URL, you go over to top pages, and this will show you your top pages with how many keywords 
each one of those pages is ranking on in Google. So this page, for example, is ranking on 214 keywords. And over here, you can see the position in Google. So look at all these number one positions we have. And the little quote mark here means that we have the featured snippet or the box that appears above the number one search result in Google. So this is pretty incredible. Uh, it works. <laughs> it shows you that this approach we're talking about works, not only to get number one positions in Google, page one rankings in Google, to get featured snippets, but to get a ton of this organic SEO ranking, and also to bring a ton of people to your website, deliver real value, quality, to help them take action, action-packed content. The golden rule of optimizing this content, when you actually go in and look at what you're going to do with that 20%, is don't break what's working. Don't kill the goose that laid the golden egg. You remember that story. The guy had a goose that laid golden eggs, and he said, if only I cut open the goose, I can get all the gold. But it doesn't work that way. You don't want to break what's working. So when we look at content that's working, the 20% are star performers, we first of all want to exercise care. We're not going to go completely rewrite this content because obviously there's something about it that is resonating with people. There's something about this content that people love, which is why it's ranking highly. It's ranking highly not because Google has some impossible to understand algorithm that we have to somehow reverse engineer. It's ranking highly because it's useful to humans. Human beings are reading the content. Now, what is it about that content that they're finding useful? So we got to figure out what's working and we want to pay special attention to the beginning because remember the beginning matters a lot in web content. Somebody Googles a search term, they come to the page, they're gonna read that first 15 or 20 seconds and decide whether they're in or whether they're out, whether they're gonna hit the back button. We all do this. So that beginning, especially, we should take great care not to radically alter it because the beginning is probably working. But we want to look at the rest of the page and think about Time on page. Remember those two most important metrics that we covered in our earlier training. Time on page is one of them. Is there lots of eye candy? Are we following all those best practices that we covered in the new way of writing? Do we have good subheads? Remember our time on page, higher equals better. So if we can find ways to lengthen or extend or add even more value, more great content to this page, that is a good recipe for success. And we also want to think about bounce rate, our second metric. How many people are reading the page deciding they don't, it's not answering their search result and clicking back uh, to Google? Do we have a clear call to action at the bottom? Are we clearly leading them to one place at the end of that article? And do we have links to related articles, either on this site or on outside sites? Remember, linking to outside sites is not a bad thing because that lowers our bounce rate. That tells Google somebody found this page and it led them somewhere that was useful for that search that they were looking for. Remember, bounce rate lower equals better. And then we can research other sites that are ranking on these same keywords. So when you type in this keyword like Facebook coin, what are the other pages that are coming up? What are they talking about? And how could we use some of that information to make our page even better. So then we want to rewrite the content. When I say rewrite, I don't mean scratch it and start over. I mean, we literally take what we have as like a draft and then we start to evolve it or make it better. We want to keep what's working again, especially at the top. Now, one uh, thing that we can do to the beginning is we can include a TLDR, which means too long, didn't read. And in scientific journals, they call this an abstract. In business papers, they call this a summary. But it's a one paragraph summary of what this article is all about. So on this page here, we have that already. You can see 
how this works. If you're new to investing in the world of Bitcoin, this page is your quick start guide. We're going to explain what you need to know using analogies, plain English descriptions, so you confidently explain Bitcoin to your friends and colleagues. So that's a too long, didn't read summary. Then we can update and improve throughout the rest of the article. But again, tread lightly on that intro unless it is to tighten it up even further to make it even easier to get at a glance that this page is going to deliver the goods. Beyond that, we can add content freely. And remember, more content means more value for your readers. That increases time on site, that decreases bounce rate, as long as we maintain both the quality and the quantity of the content this is good. And finally, we want to update the content. So any information that's outdated, we want to get it uh, up to the current date. We want to refresh the data. Uh, if there's any new research that we can include. Uh, and then simply update the publishing date. So the publish date uh, for sites that have a publish date on the page actually show up in Google right here underneath the title. So when somebody is searching on Facebook coin, they see when this page was last updated. So simply going in, refreshing the content and updating the publish date, not only tells Google that this page has been recently updated, it tells your readers and it tells your future readers or your potential readers who are just seeing this come up in Google that this is a page that's been recently updated. And we tend to trust more recent content, more than older content. So that's how to optimize the content from a super high level. Now, going back to our training on the new way of writing, this checklist that we ended up on, uh, that we asked you to print out and put by your computer. Let's go through that again, because these are all good tips for how you can update this content to optimize it to make it perform even better. Did you grab your reader within 10 seconds, either with a too long didn't read summary, a good story, a chart, a graphic, something that got their attention and pulled them into the article? Remember, the opening matters a lot. Is there a strong visual? You need a great, beautiful, positive featured image, something that's going to inspire people, that's going to make them emotionally feel great about reading this article. Again, see our earlier training videos on the importance of choosing good, positive, helpful images that are aligned with the great human values. Throughout your article, you need lots of eye candy. So that means lots of ways of breaking up the text. And I'll show you these pieces in real life. Here is the article that's doing so well that we reviewed first. And you see lots of eye candy, lots of beautiful tables, lots of subheads, lots of videos. We even have memes in here. So see how it's very easy in this article to scroll to swipe to scan through and pick out relevant bits of information. This is how people read today. People do not read long blocks of text. They do not sit down and read the entire thing straight through. They read like they're swiping or scanning through. And that's why this page performs so well. Similarly, here's our What is Bitcoin page. And you can see here we've broken it into sections with each of these being a link that takes it down. There's pull quotes here that help highlight those information, those key points to make it even easier to read. We've got charts, we've got graphs, we've got lots of great bold face headings. We've got images. We've got subheads that have related keywords that we might want to talk about. So this is the content checklist in real life. It's easily scannable. We can skim this and pick out those pieces of information. You'll notice we have really short paragraphs, no longer than three sentences. We've answered the keywords. What is Bitcoin? What is Facebook coin? And then all the related keywords or questions that come with that. Why is Bitcoin valuable? How do I buy Bitcoin? And then we have something to say. We actually have a point of view. 
We have authority sources. So again, we've linked to other valuable sources, other reputable sources of information, whether those are uh, surveys or reports or peer-reviewed journals. And we've linked to those so that people can go check them out, which again, increases our time on page and lowers our bounce rate. We also have a sense of style with these. You can see we use memes, it's kind of funny. We've included humor. We've used lots of plain English language and interesting ways of describing these technically complex topics. See our training on simplifying complicated topics. And finally, we have a clear call to action at the end of all these. We have one place, one funnel where we want people to go. So all of these things we've been talking about in all of these videos really work. And after they start to work, we can make them work even harder by periodically revisiting and seeing which pieces are doing best and how we can add even more of these tools, even more of these techniques to make this content even more valuable for our readers and for the world. And that's how we make better communication. Thanks for watching.